good morning so today we are going to discuss a new topic and that is the carbonate environment on last turn we discussed about the shallow marine environment and we classified the shallow marine environment into two shallow marine environment means the sedimentary environment which is located at a depth of about 200 meter into the ocean and that is also the zone of photic environment so the shallow marine environment up to a depth of 200 meter in which we are getting terrigenous sediment that is known as terrigenous shallow marine environment that is also known as sandy shallow marine environment that is also known as plastic shallow marine sediment environment but the second type of shallow marine environment in which there is no input of plastic sediment or terrigenous sediment or sandy sediment they are the carbonate environment so the main difference between the carbonate sediments and the terrigenous sediment is that in the case of terrigenous sediment or the plastic sediments the sediments they are made how they are made they are made by the process of weathering and transportation whereas in the carbonate the carbonate sediments they are not made but they are formed how they are formed they are formed by the process of precipitation or they are formed by the chemical and the biochemical processes whereas the terrigenous sediments they are made by the erosion and the transportation in the case of terrigenous sediments the hydraulic hydrodynamics or the hydraulic input is very important whereas in the case of carbonate sediment there is no role of fluid dynamics it means the terrigenous sediment in the case of terrigenous sediment the side of the sediment that is the pebble cable or sand and the silt they explain about the energy of the depositional environment whereas in the case of carbonate sediments the size is not important but composition is important and therefore the size of the carbonate sediments that is not helpful or that doesn't indicate anything about the energy of the depositional environment the terrigenous sediments they are formed in any type of environment marine or non marine whereas carbonate sediments they are formed only in marine and even in marine they are formed only in uh, shallow marine environment the terrigenous sediments they are formed in uh, cold water as well as in warm water whereas the carbonate sediments they are generally formed in clear and the warm water generally between uh, 30 degree north to 30 degree south latitude whereas the terrigenous sediments they are formed or they can be formed anywhere so this is the main difference between the terrigenous sediments and the carbonate sediments the carbonate sediments if you just look at their distribution or their importance the carbonates are one of the most important sedimentary rock they cover about one tenth of the total sedimentary cover on the surface of the earth and in the carbonate rocks the limestone and the dolomite they are very very important so the carbonate sediments they are generally found in the clear warm and shallow marine environment and all those areas into the shallow sea or into the shallow ocean where carbonates are formed they are known as carbonate platforms and they are also known as carbonates factory so this is basically the self part of the ocean so the carbonate environment basically it can be again classified uh, that the carbonate environments which are found in inner self and the carbonate environments which are found in outer self 
self is uh, means continental self and we all know that continental self means that part of the ocean this goes up to 200 meter depth so the inner self which is close to the marginal marine environment so the inner self this is characterized by carbonate soul environment so what is sandy soul sandy soul means deposition of sand it is we can say that submarine delta which is dissected by a number of channels so the submarine delta which are dissected by a number of channels they are basically known as carbonate sand souls and they are basically made up of oolites or oolites we all know that oolites they are basically uh, carbonate which are spherical sub spherical oval sub oval elliptical sub elliptical in shape and less than 4 mm in diameter so the inner self that is the soul environment that is basically made up of oolites or that is also made up of benthic organisms and the next is they, they are basically uh, sand sized particles so the inner self carbonate environment that consists of sand sized particles basically the oolites are benthic organism the next is the outer self outer self is that part of the cello marine environment which consists of basically planktonic organism and the size of the sediment decreases because we are moving away from the shoreline so the inner self that consists of sand sized particles generally oolites whereas the outer self that consists of clay sized particles so these clay sized particles they form the most important that is the chalk we all are familiar with the chalk that they are very important outer self deposition then the next is the reef in the continental self next is reef formation of reef reef are basically the we uh, we all are familiar with the reef formation the fringing reef barrier reef and the atoll and we have already described that reefs are nothing but they are the accumulation of the dead parts of the sea organism so if the composition in most of the cases they are calcareous in nature so reefs they are very very important in case of carbonate formation and in the case of uh, reef buildup and the carbonate buildup if reef builders are sometimes referred as biofarm so all those reefs which are arch shape or dome shape so if reef buildups are arch shape or dome shape they are known as biofarm and if the reef buildups are flat top the top is flat then they are known as biostorms so there are two types of carbonate formation in the reef into the silo marine environment the biohan and the bio storm then the reef is again classified into a number of things that is the back reef reef flat reef crust reef front and the fore reef so back reef fore reef reef front that is similar to the shore line back shore off shore fore shore so the reef environments are again classified into the back reef reef flat reef crest and reef shore and the reef front then the next is the carbonate platforms so all those places in the silo marine environment where carbonates are formed they are known as carbonate platform they are also known as carbonate factory so there are basically three type of uh, carbonate platform one is ramp 
then rim the platform and then isolated platform but some scientists they have also classified into a number of subdivision that is the ramp platform on rim the platform rim the platform isolated platform and the uh, epiaric platform are epicontinental epiaric platform so what is ramp platform what is unrimmed platform what is rimmed platform and what is isolated platform and then the epiaric platform number one is the ramp platform if this is the c this is the ramp ramp platform it means the ramp platform in the case of the ramp platform this is ramp similar to the ramp which connects the road and the houses so generally the ramps are very gentle slope gradient in the same way all those places into the ocean which are having very gentle slope gradient about 1 degree to 2 degree slope gradient is 1 degree to 2 degree they are known as ramp so the formation of carbonate on these is known as ramp platform the ramps are further classified into three unit the inner ramp are the selogen which are affected by wave and tides the middle ramp which are very close to the fair weather wave base and then the outer ramp which are very close to the storm generated wave base so the ramp can be classified into three the second is on rim platform if this is the this is sea level basically this is sea level so this is on rim platform so if you just look at this and look at this here the slope gradient there is continuously the inclination is is very smooth very gentle but there is inclination in the case of unrimmed platform there is no inclination at all they are roughly flat they are roughly horizontal so all those places into the shallow sea which are very flat and there is no any rim in the ocean side all those places are known as unrimmed platform the size here is also 10 to 100 km and the size here also is 10 to 100 km in the case of rimmed platform this is similar to the unrimmed platform this is also flat almost horizontal but there is a rim there is a reef which disconnect this part from the ocean this is also 10 to 100 km in size so the only difference between unrimmed and rimmed is that both are flat both are 10 to 100 km into the shallow sea but in the case of rimmed platform there is a rim which isolate this zone from from rest part of the ocean and the limestones are deposited here in the case of ramp limestones are deposited here the third the next is fourth is isolated platform in the case of isolated platforms if this is the c then this is isolated platform this is also in size about 10 to 100 km maybe 1 to 100 km also and if you just look at the carbonates are deposited here if you just look at this this is surrounded from all the side in this side we are also we are having deep water here also we are having deep water so this is isolated platform is those platforms 
which are shallow but they are surrounded by deep water so this is isolated platform and the last is epiric platform epiric platforms they are very large in size 10 to 10000 kilometer broad ocean shallow oceans where formation of carbonate takes place so the ram environment carbonate environment unrimmed or non rimmed rimmed isolated and epiric these are the various carbonate platforms or carbonate factories where carbonates are formed the most important prerequisite or conditions for the formation of carbonate is that number one there should be no clastic input at all means there should be no terrigenous sediments they will be formed only in those regions where terrigenous sediments are absent and the second that the shallow marine environment should be warm that's why they are generally located into the tropical region so this is all about the carbonate environment or the carbonate platforms or the carbonate factories please revise all these sediment environments if there is any question or any query I, I will be very happy to answer all those questions. I am really very very thankful to all the students and all the viewers who are continuously asking the questions on the in the comment box of the YouTube and utilizing this lockdown period to strengthen their sedimentology. So thank you and good wishes. On next turn we will discuss the marginal marine sediment environment or the transitional environment, the deltaic and the tidal flats. Thank you and good wishes to all of you.